the derivative of ln x, so again, this is material that isn't part of the Ontario grade 12 curriculum, but something that you will be learning at university, or maybe you are in university and you want to know how to do it. So let's talk about uh, the proof, which you could probably do on your own if you spend enough time thinking about it. If we start with saying y equals ln x and say we want to take the derivative of y with respect to x of this, we could rewrite this. Remember when you were working with logs and lawns and sometimes when you were stuck in the logarithmic form, you put it into exponential form. So that's what we're going to do here. So if I were to write this in exponential form, can you remember what you would do? Remember this is ln, so it's a base of e, right? So that means that e to the y is equal to x. So there's my first step. If e to the y is equal to x, and now I'm going to take the derivative of e to the y equals x. So remember that um, the derivative of e to the x was e to the x, so the derivative of e to the y is going to be e to the y derivative of y with respect to x, or maybe you could have written y prime here. That would have been just fine. And on the right side, now I have the derivative of x, which is 1. So that means that dy dx is going to be 1 over e to the y. And look, e to the y is equal to x. So that means it's equal to 1 over x. So that means the derivative with respect to x of ln x is equal to 1 over x. And that's what you're going to need to remember, right? Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. And by looking at the examples, we're going to figure out another little rule that I'll write in right here. So let's do this one first. So y is equal to x ln x. First thing you have to recognize is that this is a product, right? It's x times the ln of x. So y prime, I'm going to do the first, which is x times the derivative of ln x, which we now know is 1 over x plus the second, ln x, times the derivative of the first derivative of x is 1. So x over x is 1, and I end up with 1 plus ln x. Ta-da! That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, what if I have y equals the ln of some function? So if I take the derivative here, I'd say y prime equals and I do 1 over this because the derivative of ln x was 1 over the x. So it's going to be 1 over all of this, x squared plus 2x minus 5. And I'm sure you know that that wouldn't be enough here because we now need to take the derivative of this function here. So I'm going to multiply it by 2x plus 2. And just simplifying this a bit, I'm going to take out a common factor of 2. And I get this, and I have x squared plus 2x minus 5. So what we can see from the solution here is that y prime, if I take the derivative of ln of a function, which is what we have here, our, our um, derivative is actually g prime x. So I took the derivative of what was in the brackets, and it's in the numerator, over the function g at x. So g prime x over g at x. So that's if you have um, ln of some function, not just ln of x. Okay. So let's take a look at some little bit more difficult questions. So if we have f at x equals the ln of cos x, what would that derivative be? Might want to stop and try it on your own. So the ln of cos x is going to be 1 over cos x times the derivative of cos x. And remember, cos goes to negative sign. Remember, anything in trig that starts with a c goes to a negative. It's just the way it is. So that gives me minus sine x over cos x, which of course we could simplify again to be negative tan x using the identity that tan x is sine x over cos x. Okay, number four. So this time now we have ln of x raised to the fourth power. So we have to use the chain rule here. 
So we're going to put four in front, leave everything alone. So I have ln x to the power of three. And now I need the derivative of the inside. Derivative of ln x is one over x. So I can just put it down here like this. Okay, so that's, that's not too bad. Let's take a look at one that's a little bit more complicated. And I'm going to show you two different methods to do it. And that would be this question here. Y equals the ln of x over the root of x plus 1. So you probably know that this means that this is going to need a quotient rule. Right? It's a quotient. So if I do y prime here, just the old-fashioned way, and I would say, well, the derivative of ln of this is 1 over this, right? 1 over x root x plus 1. So that means I'm going to flip it. So that gives me this. So I have x plus 1 over x, the root of x plus 1 over x. And now I need the derivative of this. So remember, um, we said ln of x, the derivative of of ln x is 1 over x, so I did 1 over this, which gave me this, and now I need the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to use the good old ho de high rule. So ho, square root of x plus 1, d high, the derivative of x is 1, I'll put it there just so you know, minus high, that's x, and d ho, the derivative of the root of x plus 1, uh, remember that that is x plus 1 to the half power, so that's going to be 1 half x plus 1 to the minus 1 half, right? And all over whole squared. So the root of x plus 1, if I squared, that's just going to leave me with an x plus 1. Okay, so let's straighten this up a bit because sometimes just by, you know, simplifying things a bit, things look much neater and it helps you to figure out what you should be doing as well. So I have the root of x plus 1 minus, now I'm going to rewrite this um, as a fraction, so numerator, denominator. So you want to say, okay, well, what's in the numerator? Well, this x is... And what's in the denominator? This is where people have some trouble because this is in the denominator, so that's a 2. And all of this is in the denominator, so that's the square root of x plus 1. And I'm still all over x plus 1. Okay, so in order for me to combine these two, um, combine these two fractions, this one and this one, I should have a common denominator, right? So if I'm going to add them together. So let's start this again here. So I have square root of x plus 1 over x. And now I'm going to multiply. I'm going to make a common denominator of the square root of 2, 2 square root x plus 1. And don't don't worry, I'm not forgetting about this. I'm going to multiply by 1 over x plus 1, which is the same thing, right? So if I multiply this by 2 root x plus 1, the root x plus 1s will become just x plus 1 because I'm multiplying these. And so I end up with 2 times x plus 1, which is 2x plus 2. Okay, I hope you followed that. And then I have minus x. And now I'm going to do a little more simplifying. So I have, I'm probably writing out more steps than you would probably need to do, but it makes it more clear, right? Okay, so here now I have 2x minus x, so that's going to be x plus 2. This is going to be 2 square root x plus 1. And then I have 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so now let's look. What can I simplify here? Everything's multiplied together, so that means I can divide numerators and denominators, but you have to remember they have to be on little packages, right? Like don't divide x into here. That would just be really sad. Okay, so I have x plus 1, root x plus 1, root x plus 1, 
And that's pretty much it. But I really don't have much left up here. Now I have x plus 2 times 1. So that gives me x plus 2. And in the denominator, I have 2x times x plus 1. So 2x times x plus 1. Okay, so that's the long way. Now I'm going to show you a much shorter way. And we're going to go back to the question here. Let's move this over here. So this will be part two. And you're going to apply the rules of the laws of logarithms that you know. So you, you know that if you have the log or the lawn of something divided by something, you can write that as the lawn of x minus the lawn of x plus 1 to the half power. Okay, so that's a little more simplified, but we have one more step that we can do, and that's because this power can be written in front. So remember the lawn of something to the half power would be the half times the lawn of x plus 1. And now you can take the derivative and it's going to be much faster than doing all this work, right? So let's take a look now. Y prime, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x minus 1 half. The ln of x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. And the derivative of the inside would just be 1, so we don't have to worry about that. And that gives me 1 over x minus 1 over x. 2 times x plus 1. So that gives me 2x times x plus 1. And I have, oh sorry, we have to find the common denominator here, right? So 2x, this is x and this is 2 times x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to make a common denominator here of x times 2x plus 1. And so this is going to be multiplied by x. So that's going to be minus x here, right? So I did x. This one needed an x. I'm going to put a different color here just so you see. This has to be multiplied by x. So this gets multiplied by x. This gets multiplied by 2x plus 1. So this gets multiplied by 2x plus 1. Sometimes colors help, right? Okay, so that gives me the x here, and this is going to be 2 bracket x plus 1 minus x. So 2x minus x. Now let's do it a long way. 2x plus 2 minus x over 2x times x plus 1. And that's going to give me x plus 2 over 2x times x plus 1. Now, that may look a lot longer, or not much longer, or much shorter, I should say, than this one. However, you have to remember that I did a lot of steps here for you that you probably could have skipped that might not have been so easy to um, do all in one step over here. Okay, so that's a lesson on the derivative of the ln of x. And in the next lesson, I'll do the derivative of the logarithmic function. So I hope this is helping you out. Um, please subscribe and comment and give me thumbs up and keep my channel rolling for me. Bye for now.